Certainly, the people think about this eruption on, in terms of consumer experience, you know, uh, the way that people consume products. But I think the disruption is going to happen more behind the scenes. We're going to, because innovation is not constrained to your distribution model or your customer experience only. It's in terms of your processing, um, the way that you identify opportunities, data analytics, those kind of things. So I think that the industry is going to become significantly more effective by tapping into a lot of these trends and, and things that we see in the world to lift the game, you know, to reduce expenses and reduce cost and become more proactive and efficient and, and respond to consumer needs. Today we're looking at invisible things, ones that develop behind the scenes. One minute nothing, suddenly they're changing the game in unexpected ways. The 21st century has been rich with that type of development. And we're just at the beginning of this disruption by stealth, as the digital era continues to silently, and not so silently, transform the landscape. Hello, I'm Ross Campbell, leading on digital at Genre, and your host for this podcast series. Join me on an audio adventure that restrings highlights from our global research into compelling considerations for the future, for discussion and exploration, with you, your team, your company, and our innovation partners. Episode 8 of 10. What does it mean to be in between an era? If you think about agricultural era to industrial era, it was huge. It's huge technologically, it's huge in terms of how work was done, but it was huge socially as well. And so agricultural to industrial and then industrial to digital. Um, but if, what if this shift is just as large, if not larger? I mean, John Chambers, who'd been the head of Cisco for such a long time, really talked about this being 10 times the impact of the internet, what we're beginning to enter. And we're just in the early days. Um, so if everything you see today is just the beginning, we don't know which of those beginnings are gonna grow up and be big impacts or which ones will combine. So we're seeing kind of the earliest days of a transformation. Disruption can take place within the insurance industry itself where it competes against other new players that are uh, entering the markets. But I think disruption can also take place in other industries and this can have a knock-on impact on how life companies operate. We don't recognize these changes and we don't manage our risk appropriately. Uh, we could um, not be competitive from a pricing point of view. Uh, so we need to be very aware um, of external changes, disruptive changes in external industries outside of insurance. Um, what is the impact on insurance business and the risk that we manage? Changes uh, comes in faster, deeper, and a larger impact, and also more global. And basically, very, very profound, right? If you if you look at all the changes, um, internet, for example, uh, is, is one big change. People picking up, you know, if you look at the subscribers, it's a really big thing. Look at the speed of the mobile phone pickup. Um, look at all the technology pickup is really, really accelerating um, at a high rate. And if you look at the number of subscribers um, on the internet and the mobile phone, the numbers also increase exponentially, right? So if you look at the, those, this is just huge. So you know, the effects are, are really profound and, and affecting everybody's life. I think the insurance industry as a whole is ripe for change. True big data inside of insurance organizations and they don't tap into it at all. So a lot of value on the table there. Then if you look at Internet of Things, um, the number of wearable devices, the data that generates, um, where we get wireless homes that's going to start generating data around the home, around driverless cars, that's shaking up the insurance industry and I think it's starting to look at that. There is uh, such a lot of innovation in this space, and to call it um, uh, fintech space, that these new products are going to be made available very quickly. They are available. Um, whether that's is being to transfer funds internationally, you know, FX transfers, whether it's payment wallets, Bitcoin wallets, etc., or whether it's a whole host of other things, and insurance, I guess, would be part of that. So, for instance, um, an insurance model where you only pay for the insurance as you need it. We're in the sort of Cambrian evolution of the, the next phase uh, of economy and of uh, business models and so on, given these new technologies. So um, there's this huge evolutionary uh, leap that is, is being taken, which is akin to you know, the Big Bang. To understand more of the potential means looking beyond the insurance world at what has worked elsewhere. What could send waves of disruption our way? 
It also means building an awareness to the swift uptake of new technologies, ones that can help insurers to innovate in surprising ways, and medical innovation is an obvious inspiration. I think there's a very exciting future for, for 3D printing. Uh, as new materials are developed, we will be able to print different types of scaffolds. These scaffolds can then be used to seed with stem cells and to grow organs for, for patients. Not only external prosthesis, but organs will be, we will be able to print, print different organs. They have already started in the United States of America where they printed a windpipe for a small girl. Medical technologies are transforming insurance in so many ways. Of course, it enables us to diagnose with greater efficiency, treat problems that were previously untreated before. And I think that the role of the insurer is not just to insure and provide benefits to consumer who might be sick and who might have health problems, but also to incentivize the medical practitioner who innovates to create new efficiencies for the patient. So we've got to consider going forward, how can we present new and better technologies and use all the data that we have at play to make med medical practitioners and medical practice more efficient as we innovate towards the future. That's unbelievable if you actually see uh, some of the medical tests that can take place at the moment uh, than compared to what we had a couple of years ago. It's um, from a year to year basis, I mean, costs have dropped dramatically. Um, the experience around those tests, uh, the rapid test, um, is going to result in a far better client experience. Um, so you get the, the, the double benefit of its lower cost for the industry and uh, a better experience for our clients. If you combine the medical tests that we do with technology in underwriting, for example, um, we, we are getting a fantastic, we should be getting better and better risk management going forward, which should drive value for money up and price down for our clients. And then there are other invisible technologies that are changing how transactions happen. Things like cloud computing, cryptocurrency, and claim bots. Sometimes we jokingly call ourselves like the cloud generation, like cloud babies, because I have only worked um, on cloud services solutions. I just happened to be there right on the, on the birth of it and never worked on anything else. I've never really worked on on-premise software. It's always been cloud services. There's a huge drive to us of uh, cloud base uh, because uh, there's no reason for you to own your data storage, you know, because you're not a data storage uh, company. So if the storage, you know, if we talk about the data, uh, data storage uh, business, getting more robust right now as it is, and getting very, very secure, then I think there's a lot of migration to us, the, uh, the cloud base. One of the really big things I'm excited about is cloud computing. Because what cloud computing does for me is unlock the potential of all the challenges we've had in our legacy systems, where we haven't been able to give people the information they want where they want it. Um, with cloud computing and using um, portable devices, we can then start to give people a lot more information about what relationship they have with us. If you would have told anybody that there would be a, a digital coin created out of, out of nothingness that would surpass the value of gold, nobody would have believed you. They would have laughed you off the stage. And yet today we're sitting in a reality where a Bitcoin is valued at greater than the price of an ounce of gold. And so we have to acknowledge that technology is moving uh, our system forward faster than we can really uh, embrace and understand. The bringing together of, of software technology and computer horsepower in the background is creating opportunities to work with people in a way that humans used to in the past. You, you see things like claim bots um, and you know I, I experience when I go into websites having conversations with people that don't exist. Um, to, to quite a deep level, and, I, and when I realise that it's not actually a person, it, it's the wall, how did that happen? Taking advantage of new technology and adapting how we offer service can help us convince future customers that we are relevant to them, that we are easy to do business with, because people just feel and think and act differently than they did before. New generations present interesting opportunities to almost any business. And one of the reasons 
is that they tend to think a little bit differently. They engage with the world in a different way. And, and one of the ways, because of the, they have technology, is that they redefine the notion of what a community is. 50 years, a community was defined geographically. It was defined by race or uh, even by gender uh, in certain cases. It was defined by religion. The way that millennials think of community, of course, is intermediated by technology. So they have a community through Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is uh, that really constitutes an amazing array of different kinds of people, people that their grandparents may never have conceived of belonging to their community. So I think for too long, some of our large institutions have dictated the way business is done. And in fact, people want to do business the way they would like to do it. Um, and the, the winners are going to be the guys who can, who can meld their business model to the real needs of the millennials or whoever. So new generations think of what insurance is in a very different way. We're now seeing a kind of blurring, what the millennials may, re may refer to as a mashup, a mashup of insurance products. Uh, which provide, I think, a fascinating opportunity for insurance companies to be innovative. Traditional market segmentation has had clusters of people, but really what we're moving towards is a seg segment of one, that each, each person is an individual, each person will get a tailored individual solution for themselves. Customers are beginning to expect mass customization, and that expectation is not only about product and service, it's also about personalizing experience, another silent invitation for the industry to respond to. Anders Nilsson, CEO of Think, explains this shift and how other industries have responded. They've gone from being in the experience economy to now being in the transformation economy. Nike, for example, that used to just sell us products, right, hardware. But by having an app like Nike Plus, for example, by having Nike Running Club uh, and allowing you to co-produce or co-innovate which kind of shoes perfectly fit you, all of a sudden they're finding that the digital software is selling more of the hardware and they're fundamentally invested in your own self-actualization or climbing of Maslow's needs hierarchy to make sure that you're wealthier, healthier and better off. And that sort of transformation economy I think is the next level to this idea of co-creation. The silent, invisible forces of change are at work. Let's see and hear and be part of that transformation economy. We really want to talk to you about digital. Call your local Genry office to make that happen or get in touch with me direct. And please join me in the next podcast to hear more insights.